Hello everybody, Dr. Carmen Bryant from Psychological Health Consultants and Services and my program, Redefining Yourself. It is a program that I develop with women in mind who are in thinking of leaving and needing more education or have left and are recovering from domestic violent, uh, domestic violent relationships. There we go. Uh, and my main focus is narcissist abuse or overcoming narcissist uh, abuse uh, and narcissist recovery. I've been receiving a lot of uh, mail uh, emails uh, and a lot of comments uh, from those of you that have been sharing your stories with me and I am so honored that you would trust me with your stories and I am so thankful that uh, you know these videos that I have posted uh, for some of you said that it's been helping you and I'm so grateful that that uh, you know it's, it's nice to hear feedback to know that uh, what it is that I share with you is really helping you and I'm so honored and and that's what keeps me driving keeps me driven to keep doing it so for each and every one of you that are new subscribers thank you guys so much for uh, subscribing to my channel if you have not already please do so. I am at Dr. Carmen Bryant with a T, uh, overcoming narcissist abuse. And make sure you hit the bell so that you can hear whenever I come on live. I do I do live uh, question and answers and I also uh, pre-record and then post so that you guys uh, have the information. Normally do my pre during my pre-recordings, I usually take the time to study and I do apologize because I did not post a video yesterday because I was doing some research on empathy. Uh, and I was looking at a, a lot of research dealing with empathy and, and normal formation of empathy uh, the empathy spectrum and so I got kind of uh, carried away in the study and so I, I ran out of time to post and only had 15 minutes to really record and I did not want to rush through a recording just to put something out there I wanted to make sure that I studied enough to bring information to you and so once again for those of you that have just subscribed to my channel I really appreciate it thank you so much that you will find uh, what I say worthy for you guys to watch and I really appreciate it. Those of you also uh, that are watching via um, Facebook, my professional Facebook page which is under Psychological Health Consultants and Services, please take the opportunity to subscri subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, and whenever I come on live I invite you to come and talk to me and ask me questions. If I don't have the answer I will research it and come back and provide it for you. Uh, but today I just wanted to come on really quick um, I do have a client coming in, uh, but I wanted to come in really quick, and I was doing some research in, in, in reference to empathy, uh, and so I wanted to talk to the empaths, you know, uh, but I wanted to, to give you a little education about empathy, you know, that spectrum of empathy, that, and then from one end to the other, you know, the severe to less severe, uh, or, or, you know, and I'll explain it to you in a minute. But I, I was looking at some research through the U.S. National Library of Medicine, National Institute of Health. And under here, uh, authors Ariel Baskin Summers, Elizabeth Krusmark, and Elise Ronning, Running, Running Stam. Running Stam. There we go. And the title, uh, this is in April, 2000, April 30, 2015. Um, and it was posted, it was published, and so it is uh, 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 in, a, in a file, obviously. Uh, and let's see, and it is empathy and narcissistic personality disorder from clinical and empirical perspective. And so I just took some information out of there to give you some understanding of those of you that have been victims or survivors of narcissist abuse, but also to give you kind of an understanding of the spectrum of empathy and then going into narcissism. And so what I found, uh, which I knew, but I just had to, I, I like, I like writing and I like drawing graphs for myself. So I can, that's, I think I got carried away yesterday in drawing graphs. And so I was doing some um, research and let me scroll down um, to where I was looking. Okay. Um, so understand that there is a spe spectrum uh, and a lot of studies that were conducted on empathy was done um, uh, studying those with autism. Uh, and those of you that may have family members or may personally um, deal with autism, uh, have family members or children with autism, you know, there is a uh, less severe, which is usually the highly, more highly functioning uh, people with autism that is also called Asperger's to the more severe form of autism uh, where they may be nonverbal and uh, the nonverbal, uh, but there is a spectrum of autism and um, usually the way that they described um, the autistic spectrum was um, a problem with um, an 
empathy disorder, empathy problem, empathy, and you know that dealing with with those of you that do know, um, dealing with those with autistic, um, you know, autism, um, they have a problem with um, uh, connecting. Uh, with other people. They have a problem em with empathy. They have a problem with social interaction. They have problems with um, like uh, uh, read being able to read facial expressions or body language or uh, in fluctuations of the, of the uh, voice, you know, the frequency of the voice. And so they have a problem with the connecting with another person. Uh, so they don't typically, they cannot connect with another person. And so a lot of the study was conducted um, uh, dealing with those with autism. And so they're, uh, you know, dealing with empathy itself, the studies of empathy, I found that, you know, on one end of the spectrum, you have those that will consider to be, and I'm looking down at the piece of paper, you guys, I wrote a whole bunch, see a whole bunch of my notes, all these notes I wrote myself. Um, so, but on one end of the spectrum, uh, it's hyper, super empathetic. So those are ones that, uh, the ones with hyper, and, and I'll explain it to you, but the hyper super empathetic uh, on, this, on one end of the spectrum, uh, which can also lead to uh, personality disorders or problems in the personality patterns, uh, distress, social dysfunctioning, and uh, personality disorders dealing with like being over empathetic. Those are the ones that you would consider the empaths, uh, super uh, excessive empathy. Then if you move down the spectrum a little bit, you have the normal empathy. Then you move down the spectrum a little further. And I added this in here from my experience is that you have those that are empathetic. So they're able to connect with other people's emotion, but have narcissistic traits. And so, and then you have this zero empathy and that zero empathy goes on to, it starts another spectrum, another uh, spectrum, which then you begin to experience um, personality disorders such as uh, narcissistic personality disorder, the cluster Bs, you know, the antisocial personality, the psychopaths, the sociopaths, you know, histrionic, those, those dramatic personality traits. That's when on the other end with the zero empathy, that's where you start going into that spectrum. And in that spectrum, there's also degrees of pathology for, and we're talking about narcissism, there are also degrees of narcissistic, you know, narcissism, there are degrees of narcissism from, from low functioning to very high functioning. And we'll talk about that on another scope. And so with the empath empathy, and, and let me start off on, okay, so zero empathy, you know that you're going into the narcissistic spectrum or antisocial, but you're going into that narcissistic spectrum. Um, then you have the em empath or the, those with empathy that have empathy that are able to connect emotionally, you know, they, they're able to catch uh, facial cues, body language, even language cues, you know, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you know, or really... You know, but they can catch the fluctuation of the voice, the body language, facial expression. They can read facial expressions, but they have narcissistic traits. Uh, for those people that have narcissistic traits, uh, they are not they do not have narcissistic personality disorder because they still remember it's a lack of empathy. Narcissistic personality disorder, you know, some of the key features is that lack of, of empathy, the inability to feel what other people feel or even relate. Uh, to them emotionally and everything is turned on to themselves. Everything is for self-gratification. Uh, for those that have empathy with narcissistic traits, those are ones that may have come out of families that have narcissistic personality disorder, have family members with narcissists, or come out of family of narcissists, uh, or have been um, in relationship with narcissists for a long period of time and picked up the traits, you know, and some of those traits, it became, um, you have learned to manipulate to have your needs met, or you have picked up on traits from the narcissist in order to function and, and, and interact with that narcissist. And so you have learned some behaviors from that narcissist. And so, uh, for those that have, you know, empathy and narcissistic traits, uh, they will, uh, manipulate people to have their needs met and they usually can feel or take advantage of other people's feelings and emotion but they can feel they know that these people so they do have guilty conscience sometimes and you know and and but they're 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 also and they also know how to discard you know they, they discard uh, but they have feelings about it sometimes they may just discard no problem but they they're able to feel other people so they're there they, it's easy to it's not easy but they're still in a in a, in a place of rehabilitation you know they're still in a place of reasoning sometimes they're, they're people that are very injured or wounded now let's go down to normal empathy meaning that um, 
people with a normal on the normal empathy spectrum are still able to connect with other people they're still able to uh, f feel what other people feel be able to put their shoes in someone else's uh, put their feet in other people's shoes you know uh, you know counselors have empathy you know because we have to be able to you know feel the pain or or look at the facial expression we have to you know look and learn to mirror you know and and that's more on the normal spectrum now when you go over to the hypersensitive the empaths, the imp, imp, the word they call the empaths, uh, and some of you claim to be empaths, but I don't think everybody is an empath. Not super hypersensitive. Um, some people are, but the hypersensitive are those people that. And I'm going to explain the three. Let me before I go into the hypersensitive uh, one. Let me explain um, these three, and you'll understand hypersensitive, okay? Because it's excess empathy. So let me explain this. So you have what's called affective. Um, empathy effective and and okay let me back up again let me back up again let me go find it okay so let me back up again let me back up before I get into the hyper sensitive empath let me go back and look at this study real quick okay let me explain the study so empathy typically emerges within the uh, first two years of life and greatly depends on the nature of human interactions and remember there's still researchers are still conducting research on narcissist narcissism and they still continue to do research on empathy so you have neurobiologists neuroscientists uh, or neuro um, psychologists and uh, psychologists that are doing studies and so in here and as I mentioned before, you know, empathy, uh, they're still trying to figure out how this narcissist personality disorder has emerged. And they're finding that, you know, it is interaction with caregivers, early interaction, trauma, you know, something has happened. Uh, and so here it says that, you know, empathy... Uh, children only develop empathy within the first two years of their life and it usually uh, results with caregiver in a style family environment the interaction with their environment interaction with family members uh, and it to support self self other self and other awareness and conscious concerns for other people uh, and this is the and the 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 people that they're quoting it from is Diketi and Svetlova, 2012, Svetlova et al., 2010, and Baish et al., 2009. So I want to give cite proper, uh, cite the proper um, uh, uh, articles that it came from. Uh, so it says that environmental, environmental, so genetics and environment affects and shapes empathetic process. Okay. And so from a neuroscience perspective, and this is coming from the article, it says there are two main subdivisions of empathy is emotional and cognitive. And I have another one is excessive. And then they have another one uh, that they're um, theorizing is also called um, motor empathy. So you have the emotional, which is um, the uh, emotional uh, empathy and cognitive uh, empathy. And here I have effective empathy. Effective means being able to, uh, your facial expressions, when you have emotions, your facial expressions match your emotions. Uh, so it's affect meaning, you know, what you see, the emotions that you see in a person's face. Um, and emotional empathy includes responses to affective displays of by others, like facial expressions. And emotional evo evocative, there we go, stimuli such as phrases and stories, you know, so you can kind of, um, get the emotions out of a story uh, I'm a storyteller and so I like to provoke emotions when I tell stories you know I like to get you into that space so you can understand and a lot of women are like that you know when they're giving ex explanation about certain things they want to get your emotions involved in drawing the picture uh, cognitive empathy or theory of mind refers to the understanding and representation of mental states meaning belief desires knowledge that enables an individual to explain and predict other people's behavior. Uh, moreover, some researchers have added a third division of empathies, a theorizing motor empathy, which is associated with mirroring the motor responses of other people. Uh, this is something that I talked about, and this is Preston and DeWall, and D. 2002. Um, and this is what I said a lot of times as therapists, we do, we mirror, um, you know, the emotions of other people. You know, if they're laughing, we laugh with them. If they're sad, you know, we try to, uh, uh, put ourselves in a position to show that we care because you can't touch a client, you know, that's unethical. You don't touch a client like that, uh, besides a handshake. Um, so, those of you who have been doing it, stop that. Um, so, um, and remember with a narcissist, they mirror your, they, they don't have empathy, so they mirror what you are doing. But with people that have empathy, 
they, they're able to mirror, you know, and they learn, children learn, you know, when you're sad, you know, when you're crying, you know, uh, so children tend to mirror, you know, uh, so let me go down some. So here it said that, um, let's see, from an early age, even prior to onset of language, infants communicate with others in their environment by reading and generating facial expressions. And this is Lepanen Le Le and Nelson, 2009. And remember I said that I think on, the, on another scope is that um, we were talking about the robot and the robot collecting data and learning how to you know, generate the facial expression, but children, they, they, they cannot communicate verbally like we can. And so, excuse me, when you, when you smile, the baby smiles, you know, when you look mean, the baby looks mean, you know, so they're learning facial expressions to go with the emotion that they have. When they're sad, they cry, and, and, and you pet them to make them feel better. And so given the infant's social interactions begin with a primary care, a caregiver, the empathetic capability of the caregiver is crucial for the secure and healthy attachment to develop. So think about with a narcissist, uh, you know, the caregiver, if the caregiver if is, is dysfunctional or doesn't have empathy, you know, that the narcissist has learned certain things from that caregiver, especially when there's trauma introduced. Uh, so to the extent that children develop secure attachment, they develop more response, res, more responsivity to the needs of other people. And this is Mc, Mc, McEulin, okay, McEulin, sir, at all 2003 at all means that there's just more names uh, added to that. Okay, and so here, uh, studies have shown that individuals with narcissistic personality uh, disorder displays deficits in recognition of emotions when viewing facial expressions. And so they, don't, they can't attach with your facial expressions almost like the autistic spectrum. They cannot, they cannot read facial expressions. And the facial expressions that they read, remember they're learning. They're learning. And so, and in empathetic concern and mirroring emotions when viewing emotional charged situations. So they have a deficit. They can't do it. Something has happened to disconnect that part from early age where they have a problem with facial expressions. They have a problem with reading emotions and, and, and feeling what other people feel. Uh, theirs is normally turned onto itself uh, and, and, and is used because they're learning, so it's used in order to control other people or get their needs met. And so consistent with a specific deficit in emotional empathy, a recent neuroimaging study presented pictures of emotional faces and asked participants to empathize with the person in the picture. And so participants high on the narcissistic traits displayed decreased deactivation of right anterior insula. Remember I talked about that when we were talking about the brain and brain injury, but we talked about that when someone asked me whether or not a narcissist has been traumatized within the brain. And so, and I was talking about the insula, the anterior insula. I think I, I was talking about that. Uh, but they displayed a decreased deactivation of right anterior insula during processing of emotional faces. And this is Fan et al. 2011. The authors interpreted this pattern of activation as an indicative, indicator or indi indicative of an increased self-focus among narcissist individuals. So those with empathy, you know, to look at uh, people with facial expressions or certain facial expressions to be able to empathize and then feel, you know, uh, feel compassion for them. For narcissists, it worked in reverse. So instead of like, like most of us, to be able to look at people's facial expressions, you see someone crying, you've seen a child crying, you watch television and you really feel, you know, uh, sad for an individual that may be suffering or they're laughing, they look happy. Uh, what they found is basically that a narcissist, instead of being able to display that, it reverses and they focus on themselves. And it sounds, if you think about it, it sounds like the defense mechanism went wrong. It went backwards. And so excess empathy when I was stating the excess empathy and that's on the hyper sensitive or the the super empathetic you know that can go into uh, personality disorders you know so it's very very important that if if you uh, especially if you've been through abuse with a narcissist uh, and you and you one of the comments that you make is I can feel what other people feel and I'm hurting just as much as they hurting to an extent where it's starting to bother you in your social life, uh, it's hard for you to work in certain environments, you know, uh, and it's causing problems, you may need to seek counseling. I definitely suggest seeking counseling. Counseling. So excess empathy, em empathy or hyper uh, empathy, hyper super or hyper empathy is um, they, uh, a person 
mirrors the other person and they're like a sponge. They feel it, whatever the other person feels and suffer from it. So even if the other person doesn't go and suffer to a certain extent emotionally, you will take upon those emotions and carry those emotions and you will suffer from what they're suffering or go beyond what they're suffering. Uh, you may experience physical pain that causes anxiety and subjects you to their needs. And, and you can't see where you end and they begin. And so this is a lot of times you also find people that are people pleasers or people that are, uh, are able, unable to attack. You can't say no because you're afraid people won't like you because you're supposed to have. So it, you don't have a balance in empathy. And so having said that, uh, and, I'm, and, and I know I have to make this a little short and I apologize, but having said that, you become narcissist bait because narcissists look for people that have, you know, either they're empathetic, they'll take advantage of the empathetic, but a lot of times they also attach to people that are super empathetic or hyper empathetic. And they attach to these people and this is where they traumatize you. Now, uh, I'm gonna go on later on to talk about the other end of the spectrum with the zero uh, empathy going into the narcissist pattern and the different levels on the spectrum of narcissism. But for those of you that, um, have been abused or, or do uh, uh, affiliate or associate or uh, uh, label yourself as empaths or super empath, there is a normalcy, there's a normalcy and then there's a dysfunction, meaning hypersensitive, even to the dysfunction to the, um, to uh, working into the spectrum of narcissistic personality disorder or other cluster B personality disorders. And so I need you guys to be really careful uh, because I really suggest that you go seek counseling, you seek a professional to help you. Give me one minute, you guys, okay? But to seek counseling, uh, you guys, I'm gonna have to cut it short, okay? But to seek counseling in order to um, work with yourself, dealing with hypersensitivity and empathetic problems if you're on the other end of the spectrum. And so I'm going to cut it off because I do have a client waiting for me, okay? Hopefully this has helped you to give you some understanding about empathy and uh, the spectrum of empathy. I'll be back. I'm going to try to broadcast on uh, Periscope today uh, to talk about the other end of the spectrum, which is narcissistic uh, personality disorder. Please, if you have not already, subscribe to my YouTube channel at Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. And um, you go to my Facebook page, which is Psychological Health Consultants and Services. And like the page, hit the bell so that you can hear when I come on and broadcast. I'm sorry I had to cut it off so short. I was trying to get it in because I was doing a lot of studying, but I will be back, I promise you, and you guys go and be great.